Uh, okay, thank you uh, for the introduction. And I, I also would like to thank the organizers uh, for allowing us to present our recent research uh, on nanoglass deformation. So I'm Sang Jun Kang, and in electron microscopy group at KIT, I'm under the guidance of Professor Christian Kubel, and this work uh, is also guided by the Professor Herbert Gleiter. So today we will talk about the experimental observation of unique deformation behavior of nanoglass, which is uh, clearly distinguished against conventional metallic uh, metallic glass. So nanoglass has been developed to um, to overcome the limitation of the conventional uh, amorphous alloy. So I would like to firstly uh, to talk about the limitation of conventional metallic glass. As you know, metallic glass is a metallic alloy in the glass phase. So therefore, we also call this material um, uh, as a non-crystalline alloy. So owing to the difference in the atomic structure compared to the conventional metallic alloy, and the conventional polycrystalline alloy, so metallic glass exhibit superior mechanical strength as shown in this, um, uh, the, uh, this map. So metallic glass here exhibit very high yield strength compared to any kind of uh, other material like uh, ceramics and metals and, and crystalline alloy here. But honestly speaking, the metallic glass has not been yet successfully adopted for industry application. So main problem for the metallic glass is limited ductility. So with the formation of shear band, which promotes easily, easy fa only failure um, during a plastic deformation. So concerning industrial uh, application, only the high strength is, is, does not mean much because uh, what we more care is actually damage tolerance when, when, we, um, when we use a material for high durable purpose. So this is a point that we need to think about the deformation behavior. And, and we want to actually, we generally want to induce the homogeneous deformation within the material to offer a certain degree of plastic deformation. So therefore, new material design um, for high enough toughness while preserving the strength as high as possible has been a major part of uh, research direction in the, in the non-crystalline alloy. So nanoglass is a new class of uh, non-crystalline solids. They differ from the metallic glass due to uh, their uh, the microstructure. They consist of the, the regions with uh, densely uh, the uh, dense glass structure connected by the interface. So generally speaking, the structure of the nanoglass are characterized by the reduced density uh, up to about 10% compared to, um, compared to uh, fully melt canched glasses. The simulation proposed that the inherent, inherent like uh, interfaces of the nanoglass can delocalize the plastic uh, stream. So therefore the nanoglass accommodates significantly high plasticity and uh, this material can deform like um, the uh, ductile material. So this is the point the where the nanoglass is highly interesting uh, for a mechanical application. So to understand the deformation behavior, we want to characterize the local structure of the nanoglass. And we want to know how the the structure is correlated with the physical property. However, the, since the image formation of such a disordered material is difficult, so our, our high resolution microscopic capability are not usually helpful for, for, uh, uh, for the research on such a disordered material. So this is an example of high resolution TM image of a nanoglass. So where we are not able to define any uh, atomic structure. So now the question is, how can we characterize such, uh, such material which do not have well-defined uh, lattice, well lattices? So we developed a four-dimensional stem to quantify the local structure of nanoglass. As you see in the schematic illustration, we use cross-parallel um, electron probe fo focused on the local nanovolume, and the, with the, the probe size is roughly one nanometer and obtain the uh, diffraction pattern from the nanovolume using the fast camera. The diffraction pattern of amorphous uh, the material is characterized by the set of the circular diffraction pattern due to their um, uh, isotropic atomic arrangement. An array, 
an array of uh, diffraction patterns are now acquired at each scanning posi positions during the stepwise scanning of the probe. So this method is, is called the forest stem, referring to its typical data set. Um, um, for example, the two-dimensional two-dimensional diffraction image, which is overall overall two-dimensional the sample image positions. So there we can calculate the structure factor based on the local diffraction pattern. And by free transformation of the structure factor, we can get the pair distribution function. So pair distribution function described the atomic density uh, by finding atomic pairs separated by a certain distance. Here, for example, the first peak and second peak um, correspond to the distance of the first and second nearest neighbor. So if we mathematically process all the diffraction pattern, we can obtain spatially resolved PDF as, show, as shown in this 3D format data. Um, so with this method, we can quantify the atomic density and um, the packing structure, atomic packing structure of nanoglass and nanosphere. So we can analyze um, either the manually selecting the reference PDF or reference the, the face, or if the projected uh, structure is too strongly overlapping, the machine learning analysis works very well to identify uh, the basis component. So finally, we can de decompose uh, their faces, and we can also map their distribution of each faces of the nanoglass. So again, I repeat the method for your understanding. Um, we obtain local diffraction patterns of the nanoglass using four uh, the four-dimensional stem, and we calculate the local PDF based on the each diffraction pattern. Then we decompose the phase of the nano nanoglass. For example, here we have a, uh, our forty stem investigation for a nanoglass provide the information that the nanoglass consists of two basis phase. For example, phases one and the phases two. So by looking at, looking at their the packing from each pair distribution function, we notice that the phase one phase one represent uh, to the core of the nanoglass and phase two represent to the uh, the nanoglass interface. So finally, we are able to analyze the distribution of their local phases. So with the development of our four system based method, we study the deform deformation behavior of nanoglass and we compare it to the metallic glass. So we firstly prepare the nanoglass and the metallic glass, which, which are same chemical composition, palladium silicon. The nanoglass is prepared by um, inert gas condensation and the particles are compressed uh, using high pressure torsion techniques. And the, nan the metallic glass is just prepared by the conventional way, the melt uh, spin quenching. So we deformed um, metallic glass and the nanoglass using scratch testing. So we observed the scratches on the surface and we also observed the wear debris for the nanoglass. And um, we also observed some shear offset on the, on the top surface of the metallic glass. So with this method, we can create such a well-localized micro defect and well-defined shear band on the, on the surface, which is uh, usually helpful for TM sampling. So TM samples below uh, the scratch, as shown in the, this re the red rectangles here, was lifted out by the FIB FIB focusing on beam and thinned down to a thickness of 100 nanometer for electron transparency. So these are cross-sectional image, uh, cross-sectional hard stem image showing the TM lamella. So we acquired the forty stem map uh, at the area indicated by these white rectangles, and here is a green rectangles for a uh, metallic glass. So the cross-sectional hard stem image showed the clear difference of the deformed structure between the metallic glass and the nanoglass. The first of all, the scratched surface of the metallic glass possesses um, the shell offset. You can clearly see here the step-like deformed feature on the top surface. And where we can uh, estimate the location of the shear band as a linear propagation of the, to the bark. Meanwhile, the scratched surface of the nanoglass does not show typical shear, shear offset and we observe such like void. The for, for clarif clarification I need to mention, we observe the, the observed void-like feature here is not really from the deformation. They are from the sample preparation. The HPT process for the sample compaction 
uh, could not fully remove such a void for this sample. So to avoid their contribution uh, to, our observa to our observation in deformation, so we rather focus on the heavily deformed the region, which is the surface, um, and focus on the much smaller region. And we found highly uh, localized or uh, deformed feature for the metallic glass, so-called shear band. And you can think of the order strain is highly localized into the this linear band structure, the indicating inhomogeneous deformation for metallic glass. However, in the contrast, um, uh, the deformed region for the nanoglass is rather broad. And, and actually this indicates um, the deformation is relatively homogeneous and delocalized only at the, at the surface area. Um, based on these um, observations, we speculate that the residual strain can be difference between these, these two samples. So, so we developed our method further um, to map the residual stress field uh, within the materials. So this is a schematic illustration of our method. So dbr 2 strain stress to distort the local atomic structure to introducing an uh, anisotropy in the diffraction pattern, so resulting in the elliptical distortion of the diffraction ring. So measuring the elliptical deviation of each diffraction pattern does provide the elastic strain map, as, uh, which is actually previously demonstrated by uh, Dr. Christoph Gamma at Austrian Academy of Science. Actually, we combine uh, this approach with the PDF analysis, and therefore we can simultaneously map the strain, strain field together with um, local atomic density. So again, if material is plastically deformed, some degree of residual stress induces elastic strain within the material. So residual stress distorts the atomic structure, so introducing entropy of the, of the diffraction pattern. So by measuring the elliptical deviation of each diffraction pattern, does provide a strain map here. So with this method, strain tensor can be obtained by algebraic transformation of the principal strain to the reference coordination coordinate system. So meanwhile, uh, PDF analysis also provides atomic packing density information simultaneously. So for the metallic loss, we observe um, the deformed sample, uh, the process highly localized residual strain, especially near, uh, near the shear bands. The shear strain here reveal on any, the anti-symmetrical strain distribution across the shear band with the sharp transitions, so occurring at the shear plane. The based on the shear offset, it can be confirmed that the popping side of the shear band is compressed and the opposite side is in tension. The atomic density map also confirmed that anti-symmetrical density, um, anti density variation perpendicular to the shear band, revealing the typical inhomogeneous deformation of the metallic glasses only localized into the limited number of shear bands. In the contrast to the metallic glass, we observe interesting deformed uh, the feature in the palladium silicon nanoglass. The deformed the nanoglass have very weak residual strain and the residual strain field is distributed only uh, isotropically. Such iso isotropical feature usually observed in the deformation of soft material because the stress is immediately relaxed during the plastic deformation. Uh, the plastic deformation seems to homogeneously occur in the overall strain the volume for the nanoglass. The shear strain and atomic density also show no significantly localized feature again indicating the homogeneous deformation of the nanoglass. So recently, the deformation behavior of the nanoglass has been compared to the to metallic glass using MD simulation under the under indentation loading by Professor Arbe in the TU Darmstadt. The simulation revealed the strain is more largely delocalized um, for the nanoglass compared to the conventional metallic glass, where the interface of nanoglass work as a scattering point of the strain. So although the structure of the simulated nanoglass and our lab-made sample seems quite different, but the observation is quite analogous to the simulation. So where we observe the localized deformation in the form of shear band in the metallic glass, whereas the um, nanoglass shows a homogeneous and isotropic deformation 
uh, uh, deformation after the scratch test. Uh, so our observation experimentally confirmed the special the deformation behavior of the nanoglass, which is intrinsically linked to their um, atomic structure at nanoscale. So here is a summary. Uh, today I talked about uh, experimental observation of um, homogeneous plastic deformation of palladium silicon nanoglass under the triological deformation. So we developed a method for the face mapping of the nanoglass using forest stem. And based on, based on our method, we can provide a highly sensitive measurement of strain and local atomic structure in the glasses and at the nano, uh, nanometer level resolution. So finally, we compare to two different glasses, palladium silicon metallic glass and palladium silicon um, nanoglass. The result uh, sh the show the homogeneous deformation behavior nanoglass metallic glass on the other end show the localized and inhomogeneous deformation in the form of the shear band. So our method is expected uh, to initiate broad research possibility uh, for solving question in, in um, nanoglasses. So finally, I would like to thank all the people involved in this work. Um, with this, I finished my presentation and thank you very much for your attention. Now I look forward to your question.